Welcome to another episode of the Tech Intersect podcast. I am your fearless host, your favorite host, I should also say, Tanya Evans, law professor, speaker, consultant, and the author of Digital Money Demystified, available now wherever books are sold, and also at digitalmoneydemystified.com. Today, we're diving into the complex and contentious world of cryptocurrency as we head into the 2024 election. Help us, Lord. And with the political landscape he- he- uh, heating up, it's more important than ever to understand how crypto, while deeply political, isn't actually partisan. So hear me out. The current policies and political maneuvers might be undermining the very freedoms that crypto promises. And so I pose these questions and I'm interested in your feedback. Are Democrats losing the battle over crypto as a democratizing force for financial freedom? And how are the shifting views on crypto affecting the political landscape? What are the implications of the latest developments, including Donald J. Trump floating the idea of having Jamie Dimon, of all people, as his treasury secretary? Diamond is known for his utter disdain for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. And this represents a significant contradiction given uh, Diamond's leadership at JP Morgan, which actively participates in ETF launches, and they worked on, developed their own internal token, if I'm not mistaken, the JP Morgan coin. It's not something, excuse me, available to the general public, but I probably. It probably works behind the scenes to make things better, faster, and cheaper for the corporation, whether that is actually passed on to customers and clients, a story for another day. But anyway, how does a possible selection of Jamie Dimon uh, as uh, Treasury Secretary compare to the much criticized SEC Chair Gary Gensler, who was a crypto and blockchain proponent before he was appointed as chair of the Securities and Exchange Commission. So if you disliked Gensler, (laughs) understatement in the crypto community, then you'd likely find Diamond even more challenging if he had such a a role in uh, in uh, in the cabinet. But industry leaders are seemingly all in for any candidate who promises sweeping change in U.S. policy toward crypto, despite any other policies that might actually be the antithesis of true access and freedom and opportunity for all. So uh, interestingly, today, this is um, July 17th when I'm doing this live and when uh, I am recording this episode, but Uh, Interestingly, Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin, he really gets it. And recently he posted a warning to single issue crypto voters on uh, Twitter. I will always call it Twitter. Evidently, it's now called X. But urging single issue crypto voters to consider the broader implications of their support for political candidates. Um. And, and so I will address that in, in this episode as well. Interested in your comments in the chat. And a final point before we get started, for my legal eagles, my legal professionals, are you ready to pivot your practice and prepare to be the smartest and well, most well compensated and most highly sought after lawyer in the Web3 economy? If so, join me for an exclusive web training It's a series that I'm doing during the summer designed to future-proof your career. So we're floating this and and testing it out this summer. Um, I'm likely to continue it in the fall. So if you happen to be watching or listening at a later date, you can always join the wait list and be advised of the next opportunity. But in session one, we will cover everything that lawyers need to know about blockchain and crypto, smart contracts. Uh, regulatory issues and all of the legal issues, the uncertainties, the legal trends that every lawyer who wants to advance his, her, or their career um, 
to apprise you of the regulatory landscape here, not only in the United States, but abroad as well. I have some fantastic folks who are coming in to weigh in about the, the uh, legal landscape here in the United States, but again, also around the world, given that this technology is global, not just local. And also because I'm an IP lawyer by training, I'll have a second session as well. You can do either or both as well. Save a little bit of money if you do both sessions in one. We'll dive deep into intellectual property rights in Web3, tackling licensing issues, emerging trends, and more. So for a transformative web training series designed for legal professionals eager to pivot uh, with purpose in the virtual currency economy, please join me. Uh, I want to share a bit about my experience in these sessions as well. I have gone from completely uh, risk averse. I'm actually quite risk averse, <laughs> averse, I should say, as a person um, and as a legal professional. But I've gone from skeptic to a leading educator and certainly an advocate in the realm of cryptocurrencies and blockchain in my journey has revolutionized my career. It's opened so many opportunities in this fast evolving field. There's so few of us who do this work. So don't miss this chance to reskill, to upskill, and to reimagine your career path. Secure your seat at advantageevans.com forward slash web three lawyer. That's web the number three and lawyer. So AdvantageEvans.com Web3 Lawyer to register or to join the waitlist today. And remember that the future of financial freedom depends on your engagement and your advocacy. So let's pivot your practice with purpose. I'd love um, to have you join us. I've done the heavy lifting so you don't have to. Uh, be sure to go to AdvantageEvans.com forward slash Web3, the number three uh, lawyer. All right, let's get into it. So cryptocurrency offers a secure peer-to-peer -peer form of digital cash. It's changing how we do business, how we send money, how we invest, and even fund political campaigns. And ideally, it shouldn't be a partisan issue. But here we are, right in the middle of a presidential election cycle, Filled with partisan battles and crypto is one of the hot topics. If you haven't heard the candidates talk about it before, you are likely to hear that because um, the regulation of cryptocurrency is a top of mind issue in at least the six uh, key swing states. This is from, and I'll speak a little bit more about it in a moment, but from a digital currency group poll that was conducted by Harris Poll uh, recently, and, and it came out a couple of months ago. In full disclosure, I am a Digital Currency Group board member, and I'm speaking on my own behalf, not on behalf of the board. But it's very interesting about what's going on and, and the fact that so many are focused on crypto. It's not the top issue for the average person, but certainly a top of mind issue, um, and, and definitely an issue for those who are in the industry and have been extremely frustrated with the regulatory uncertainty and the hostility that the current administration has shown to the crypto industry. So I, I, I still say that while um, anything having to do with money is political, politics really is the allocation and access to resources politicians are empowered to allocate those resources. So anything having to do with finance is political, but it shouldn't be partisan. Now, interestingly, both the Republican presidential nominee, Donald Trump, and his running mate, J.D. Vance, have publicly backed crypto uh, in this election cycle. In May 2024, Trump announced he'd accept Bitcoin, ETH, and Dogecoin for political contributions and also would support crypto-friendly policies if elected. Now, this is a, a big shift from his time in office when he was uh, uh, 
really an, an opponent of crypto, to be sure. In February of 2017, I believe, maybe it, I'm not sure of the month, but I know it was in uh, 2017, famously tweeted, I'm not a fan of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, which are not money and whose value is highly volatile and based in based on thin air. Now, his supporters often link his views at that time to advice from his then Treasury Secretary, Steve Mnuchin, uh, who wanted to keep the traditional legacy banking and finance system intact. Uh, I don't see that as being very different from Jamie Dimon, but what do I know? Time will tell. But even though Trump's views started to change around 2019, he didn't push for any major crypto policies at that time. And still, the crypto community at this moment uh, has coalesced around this candidate needing to, uh, even though the crypto community certainly has needed to um, clean up uh, its image after the scandals involving companies like Three Arrows Capital and um, now infamous convicted um, uh, figures like Sam Bankman Freed, for example. And so obviously saw an opportunity for favorable policies from uh, the ex executive branch. Now, again, words matter. So we use the words politics and politician all the time, but do we really know what they mean? As I said at the, the top of the show, politics involves the activities related to governance, including debates between parties about power and resource allocation. It's all about control and about distributing benefits and privileges within a society. A politician is someone who is elected and therefore allocates resources on behalf of their constituents. At least that's the way it's supposed to, to operate. There's a ton of money that, um, that is in politics in the United States. I wish that weren't the case, but it is now until it isn't. And so while elected officials, officials are supposed to serve their constituents, oftentimes um, lobbyists and, and, and big business interests and those with the deepest pockets get to move uh, the needle on the allocation of resources, um, create and implement policies that reflect the needs and interests supposed to be of the public, but oftentimes of those who are the biggest donors. And so when we talk about access to cryptocurrencies um, through legislation and how those laws are administered by the executive branch, that's deeply political. And nothing is more political, of course, than financial resources as a pathway to freedom in the digital asset economy, certainly Web3, but even beyond. Now, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin are inherently political because they change and challenge the traditional financial systems and, and the governmental control that comes with them. They offer a decentralized and transparent financial ecosystem, giving people self-sovereign agency over their money, movement, property, and their bodily autonomy, a true expression of financial freedom. And the Biden, Biden administration has not done Dems any favor. The Biden administration's approach to cryptocurrency regulation has been a disaster. And I am um, a registered Democrat and I've uh, voted Democrat my entire uh, adult life. Now, um, when we focus on Biden's approach and the, the executive's approach to cryptocurrency regulation, especially through choke point 2.0 that hasn't helped the harm done, I believe to investors and industry innovators by the FTC under Gary Kinsler and by banking regulators, the prudential regulators cutting off banking access to the industry's massive is incalculable. And as I mentioned in my testimony before the house financial services subcommittee on digital assets, uh, financial technology and innovation, the administration's piecemeal regulatory actions and regulation by enforcement have created uncertainty, stifled innovation, harmed the very investors they are charged with protecting, driving innovation offshore, costing the U.S. its leadership in the digital asset market. 
absolutely. All of that is still political, not partisan. On the other hand, Trump has taken a pro-crypto stance, as I mentioned. His uh, campaign has received significant, significant financial support from the crypto industry, including endorsements from big names like Elon Musk and grassroots organizations like Coinbase's Stand with Crypto Initiative, which I support. And uh, this support shows the industry's desire for regulatory clarity and a favorable environment for innovation even if that means backing Trump and his Project 2025, also known as Agenda uh, uh, 47, I should say, which is kind of like a, a Cliff Notes version of Project 2025. And so I want to speak a bit about Project 2025 because the um, information in that voluminous uh, document and plan and its four pillars really has informed Agenda 47, which I believe is, is kind of the antithesis of, of freedom and access and opportunity. Project 2025 is a 920-page policy blueprint from the Heritage Foundation that outlines a far-right Christian vision for a second Trump administration. It threatens various aspects of American society, including LGBTQ, uh, Q plus rights, women's rights, education, the federal uh, administrative workforce, immigration, environmental protection, health care, uh, government transparency, cultural diversity, and the consolidation of power in the executive. And this poses significant dangers to the American uh, to American democracy, I should say, to individual rights and to the social progress that we've seen over the last 40 to 50 years. And while cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin are political, again, they are not partisan. They aim to provide financial autonomy and inclusion, democratizing access to financial opportunities. But the politicization of crypto, especially under policies from Project 2025 or Agenda 2047 endangers the very freedoms. And if Project 2025's vision is implemented, protections for marginalized groups could be rolled back, social programs weakened, educational opportunities reduced, power consolidated, creating an environment where only the privileged benefit from cryptocurrencies. This undermines the inclusive and decentralized ethos and spirit of, crypto, of the crypto movement. It's, it's the antithesis of, of what appears to be Satoshi's vision from uh, the Satoshi white paper, which I encourage you all to read. And essentially, Project 2025 could turn cryptocurrencies into tools of privilege rather than vehicles for widespread financial empowerment. And when I think of the hyper-partisan campaign uh, and also positioning crypto as a Republican versus Democrat, uh, Democratic uh, principle or policy um, that actually alienates or at least might alienate some Democratic voters who would otherwise benefit from a deeply um, democratized financial uh, opportunity, democratized uh, little d. Um, now, cryptocurrency actually gets a bad rap as a tool for illicit activities, although the most popular currency for criminals and um, in being involved in, in nefarious activity is the almighty dollar by a landslide. Um, and look into some of the reports from Chainalysis for, for that. But the negative perception combined with GOP policies and rhetoric, rhetoric could hinder broader acceptance among ex its uh, skeptics and, and kind of put us even further uh, behind in terms of the advancements and the opportunities that that crypto um, and the crypto ecosystem and the, and the DeFi ecosystem can um, offer. And so I implore I've done this on the Hill. I've done this with fly-ins. I've done this with formal and informal presentations on the Hill. Democrats need to, must 
revisit their regulation by enforcement approach, must reimagine and, and reconsider uh, a balanced strategy that protects while supporting innovation. And despite the challenges, Bitcoin and other cryptographically secured forms of money are the people's money. They promote decentralization and uh, decentralization and self-sovereignty. They give individuals unprecedented control over their financial affairs. And this aligns perfectly with the broader political goal of financial empowerment and inclusion, transcending partisan divides. And Bitcoin's role in, in promoting economic freedom is significant. It offers an alternative for those, uh, for example, in countries with unstable currencies like Nigeria, where um, the, the local currency's depreciation prompted a swift uh, shift toward Bitcoin as a more stable store of value, for example. And Bitcoin's fixed supply is hard and sound money and not only acting as peer-to-peer -peer cash, but actually at this point in time, a better store of value because of the volatility that is likely to stabilize over time. We are still in a, a volatile environment, but with volatility, volatility is, is also much opportunity. The decentralized nature makes it resilient in inflationary periods um, it, um, and kind of impervious to attack from political interference and in uncertain times that provides a hedge against economic instability. So to fully realize the potential of cryptocurrencies, we need clear and inclusive regulation, both sides of the aisle. And a, a framework should protect investors while fostering innovation that ensures that the United States remains a leader in the digital asset economy. And the approval of Bitcoin ETFs earlier this year by the SEC, the impending approval of the first Ethereum spot ETFs, mark significant steps toward integrating digital assets into the mainstream financial system, further promoting financial inclusion opportunities. So, you know, thinking about Vitalik Buterin's um, warning, the again, the recent tweet, about single issue crypto voters, I really want everyone to focus on, on what he said. He emphasized that being pro crypto goes beyond financial liberty and includes broader values and freedoms. Freedoms like free and private communications, privacy friendly digital identity, the freedom of thought, high quality access to information. And, and he highlighted the reality that an authoritarian regime and power-seeking politicians often view crypto as a means for control, not freedom. And supporting that idea, that ideology only, um, you know, it only, uh, I should say it this way, only supporting cryptocurrencies when it serves their interests, such as evading sanctions and opposing it when it threatens their power. And Vitalik Sater, uh, uh, cited modern Russia as an example where the government uses crypto to bypass international restrictions while cracking down on citizens' financial freedoms. And so the bottom line, before we get out of here, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are not inherently partisan. They are tools for political and economic transformation. They represent a shift, a fundamental shift towards financial self-sovereignty and empowerment, transcending traditional po political divides. And as we move forward, I want to, um, you know, I, I, I'm challenging you to advocate for regulatory clarity, for education, for not only investors and users and innovators, but in the legislative uh, branch in the executive branch and in the judiciary to ensure that the benefits of this technology are accessible to all, promoting a more inclusive and equitable financial future. And we must, we must ensure that the message of sovereign money isn't monopolized by any single political messenger or branch of government. All right, that's my soapbox 
moment. This is the first of many discussions and interactions. I want to hear from you. Please uh, follow me on social media all across the web at IP Prof Evans for Intellectual Property Professor Evans or IP Prof Evans. And definitely visit AdvantageEvans.com for um, all sorts of resources and, and learning opportunities, not only for investors, but um, also for professionals. We got to get this right. We have to lead by example, and that means we have to learn so that we can lead. Um, as a reminder, if you want to transform your legal practice and overcome the technological competency gap that is really running rampant in our profession and also in our law schools, join me for my cutting edge web training series. It's divine, uh, designed <laughs> to future proof your career in the digital currency economy. All right. Until the next time, be good to yourself and others and um, be sure to subscribe, to like and to share and drop your comments. Uh, I look forward to nation building with you. We can do this. We can do this together. I've done some of the heavy lifting so you don't have to. And uh, I look forward to connecting with you soon. Thanks.